OpenAI has this amazing prompt engineering guide to help you get the best answers out of GPT-4. Pretty much this guide can take you from a level one GPT users to pretty much a level 99 GPT Pro. The guide is broken down into, I want to say four main methods. The first is just the overall summary of the guide where they tell you, hey, look, use this guide to pretty much get better results from GPT-4. Uh, the second thing is there is a prompt example. So if you click the prompt examples, uh, they give you different kind of styles. Remember, many people use GPT and OpenAI for different solutions like maybe product name generator for spreadsheet creator, maybe airport code extractor, VR fitness ideas, mood to color, so much. The list goes on and on. So I'm pretty sure while they might not have your exact use case, you will be able to find a use case that closely resembles what you're looking for. Now, the third thing is they have the six strategies for getting better results. And the six strategies are pretty much individual rules. We'll look at the rules in a bit. But the fourth thing is within each strategy, they have a tactic or pretty much an example of how to kind of use that strategy correctly. For me, rules number one, number three, and number four are the ones everyday users can really focus on. So number one is write clear instructions. They pretty much tell you, hey, look, these models can't read your mind. If the outputs are too long, ask for brief replies. If outputs are too simple, ask for expert level writing. If you dislike the format, demonstrate the format you like to see the less the model has to guess at what you want the more likely you'll get it and within this rule they give you six different tactics and i do want to say there are three tactics within here that i really do enjoy the first tactic is pretty much include details in your query or your prompt to get more relevant answers so for example someone is saying write a code to calculate the x sequence instead of just writing something that simple the better result is to write a TypeScript function to effectively calculate the X sequence, comment the code liberally to explain what each piece does and why it's written that way. Another perfect example is if you have meeting notes, someone might just say, hey, look, summarize the meeting notes. But instead, what you want to do is summarize the meeting notes in a single paragraph. You're telling it what you want to do, the output length, then write a markdown list of the speakers and each of their key points. Another thing you're doing here is giving it step by step. First, read it, then do this. Another one that I really do enjoy is this one to use the delimiters to clearly indicate distinct parts of the input. And if you use chat GPT like me, I use it to sometimes read numerous pages of documents. So one thing that I want to do is, hey, look, summarize the following information. And they say the best way to do it is to help kind of democrate sections of text to be treated differently. So here's an example. Summarize the text delimited by triple quotes. Here's another example where they, the, the delimited is XML tags. The next one is specify the steps required to complete a task. And like I mentioned, we actually saw that in one of the previous examples earlier on. But here, for example, use the following step-by-step -step instructions to respond to the user inputs. So first, it will tell you that the user will provide you with text in triple quotes. Summarize this text in one sentence with the prefix that says summary. And step two, translate the summary from step one into Spanish with the prefix that says translations. Another simple tactic here is just specify the desired length of the output. Just tell it, hey, I want I want about 50 words. I want about two paragraphs. I want about three bullet points. They do note that, however, instructing the model to generate a specific number of words does not work with high precision. The model can more reliably generate outputs with a specific number of paragraphs or bullet points. But before we go any further, guys, I do appreciate the support. If you haven't make sure to hit the thumbs up the subscribe button and yeah let's get back to today's episode rule number two that i really do enjoy is split complex task into simpler subtasks because they do mention that complex tasks tend to have higher error rates than simpler task. So I want to say this rule is probably better when you're building a GPT. So if you're just a typical user of OpenAI and GPT-4, it might not be too important for you, but it kind of is telling you that, hey, look, if you're creating maybe some form of customer service application where you're maybe creating a chat box that does a lot of things and kind of discusses different categories, the best way to do is first determine the primary category. Is it going to be a billing question? Is it going to be a technical question? And 
account management question or a general inquiry. So another tactic here is summarize long documents piecewise and construct a full summary recursively. So one issue is definitely context length or, or how long a document is, how many characters. With the new GPT-4 Turbo, I haven't seen this as much as it's actually done a lot better now. Uh, but they do mention that, hey, look, a complex task is to read this huge document. What's better is to just summarize each section section by section by section and then after that just kind of summarize all together so again creating this huge complex task and making it simpler now rule number three is another one that i really do enjoy and it's give the model time to think and this one is a little bit interesting right because you might be like hey you're an ai computer why do you need to think shouldn't you be able to do it right away but they do mention that asking for a chain of thought before an answer can help the model reason its way toward the correct answer more reliably. So they do mention that sometimes we get better results when we explicitly instruct the models to reason from the first principles before coming to a conclusion. So in this example, the prompt is expected to determine if the student's solution is correct or not. The user then submits um, this kind of problem and the solution and then the response that hey look the student solution is correct unfortunately the student's correct solutions is, is actually not correct and the best way to go it is instead of just putting determine if this solution is correct it says first work out on your own solution to the problem then compare your solution to the student's solution and evaluate if the student's solution is correct or not don't decide if the student solution is correct until you have done the problem yourself. So here you're giving it a time to do chain of events. You're telling it what to do step by step. You're being more selective and now you're getting a better result. Another thing, and this is one that I actually do use a lot, is ask the model if it missed anything on previous passes. So for example, if the source document is large, it is common for a model to stop too early and fail to list all relevant cases. Better performance can often be obtained by prompting the model with follow-up up queries to find new cases it missed on previous passes. So here in this system, they tell it, hey, you will be giving a document delimited by triple quotes. And it kind of tells you to summarize the important parts of it. So then the user inserts the document and the system gives the response of all the cases or the summarization of the event. After giving an output, the user should go back and say, hey, look, are there any more relevant summaries? So I've actually done this on the solutions I use chat GPT-4 and have gotten great results. So again, there's three other rules out there that you can probably go take a closer look at, but I personally don't find much use to them for improving your your GPT usage dramatically. I do believe these three rules here are where you're going to get a bulk of the improvement as a GPT user. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.